Before you, Mother Idoto, naked I stand, before your watery presence, a prodigal, leaning on an oil beam, lost in your legend. This is Derek Ofarunwa with The Medicine Shell, and today I'm going to discuss Oshimme. Of all the Arishi in Nibo cosmology, her presence is among the most universal, while her name is the most diverse. You may know her as Nemiri, Orashi, Otamiri, Imo, Idemiri, Njaba, Ezemiri, O, Ava, Omambala, and Idoto, among many others. She is the spirit of the waters, a portal between the natural and supernatural, and the medicine that brings forth abundance, healing, new beginnings, beauty, freedom, purification, love, passion, and most importantly, life. She is the queen of a realm of marine spirits, many of whom are connected to individuals among us, if not ourselves. For many people among us are her children, and as her children they must know and connect to their mother in order for their destiny to fully open. In this video, I'm going to discuss who she is, her place and power in the spiritual and living world, as well as how to honor and venerate her. Finally, I'll give you information necessary for you to know whether you are a water element, or among the children of Oshimmi. An Arushi is an interface, or a portal, for interacting with the spirits of an element of the universe. These forces are the building blocks of all existence and beyond, and radiate from the Creator's mind. And within this web, the spirit of the waters is Oshimiri. Born on the day that Chi carried his deceased wife, aka, and covered her in a bed of tears, Oshimiri has been with us since the beginning of time. And whether she manifests as a lake, ocean, or stream, her characteristics are universal. For all waters are manifestations of her, and in nearly all communities, especially river-dependent ones, she is given an altar of dedication, as well as a group of followers chosen by destiny, choice, or circumstance to harness and share her gifts of healing and abundance with the world beyond her shores. These groups would form as refuges for those seeking new beginnings and rebirth of the spirits after escaping abuse, trauma, and confinement from the society around them. Oshimiri's followers, most often led by an Ezenwai, or matron alchemist, formed a traditional power union of liberated spirits spirits who bound together to protect each other's independence, success, as well as spiritual health, and hold influence over society as a whole, and I'll elaborate on these groups later. But Oshimiri can be described as a realm onto herself, as Allah is a realm that we live on. She is the queen of a marine universe filled with sprites and energies that often affect us as individuals. Because of our spiritual intercourse with water in the process of rebirth and reincarnation, which I'll elaborate on shortly, these spirits can be a source of abundance as well as disaster in relationships, marital affairs, as well as business and personal life. But they've also been cited as a source of great inspiration by artists such as Flora Nwapa, Oliver de Kokwe, Chigoze Obiyama, Akweke Mezi, and in the uh, poem I cited earlier by Christopher Okibo, all of whom have alluded to the waters or Oshimiri being a source of their creativity and renewal as a person. When in the marine realm, she plays the role that Allah plays for us in the terrestrial realm. She is the queen and holder of all things, the source of law for her notoriously rebellious and mischievous children. Children who include the Obanje, shape-shifting seductresses known as Mamiwata, and a host of spirit wives and spirit husbands for a number of people struggling to understand why their romantic relationships on earth often end inexplicably or in recurring disaster, why they may feel the presence of an unseen lover or even a sexual sensation at strange times in their life, and why they dream of and feel for a significant other whom they may have never met. To understand Oshimiri, it is important to understand how she appears. Through divination, a community can determine what location best channels the energy of an Arushi. Once this is determined, an Ihumo is built. The Ihumo, or face of the spirit, is often called the Arushi itself, though it is important to know that these statues, trees, caves, and various locations are devices for channeling an energy and an understanding, as opposed to the energy itself. And therefore, the statue is built for us to see, learn, and understand what we are interfacing with, similar to the Ikenga on an individual's altar, or how one's chi altar represents their chi but is not the chi itself. She is depicted having long hair, which channels the power of a unique form of untamed, alluring, and mysterious beauty. It is said that children born with naturally loose and long hair, and most specifically individuals whose hair grows into dreadlocks without alteration are one with her. And as her children, they often bring her nature as well as her gifts to the world, which include her passion, creativity, beauty, and destiny of material success. 
Another set of symbols you will see on her are serpentine lines, a zigzag which represents the life force in motion and the path of energy from one source to another, as well as the spiral which represents perpetuity and the ever-abundant expansion of the universe and individual. The spiral also represents immortality, birth and rebirth, and once you understand her role in the reincarnation process, which I'll explain shortly, the symbols will come together. Her colors are Ocha and Edo. Achan describing anything that gives back light, or the nature by which light touches an object. In this case, the reflection of the sun against the surface of the water makes Ocha the color of her glowing veil. Most conventionally, Ocha is used as the word for white or as a color comparison between two objects. Acha also represents purity, the spirit, birth, death, and return. Edo, on the other hand, represents abundance, wealth, success, and radiance. But there is a layer of understanding beneath the surface of color. Acha and Edo are the colors of Nzu and Edo, two sacred medicinal clays that were first given to humanity by Oshimi. Both Nzu and Edo are said to break from the bottom of the river and float to the top or to their new home, similar to the way that a woman breaks from her birth home into her marital home, or breaks from girlhood into womanhood. Nzu and Edo are also important in communicating with the ancestors and Arushi, as it signifies the purity of your intentions and character, as well as representing Oshimiri, the portal between both worlds. Nzu and Edo, like Oshimiri, are also connected medicinally to the purification of the body in the form of detoxing and rebalancing of the body's pH, as well as healing ailments associated with water within the stomach, helping in the production of breast milk and fortifying mothers during pregnancy from nutrient deficiency. It can also cleanse impurities from the skin and is key in many ancestral and modern beauty treatments. And from this we see that understanding the facets of an Arushi is key to understanding the medicines that come from her. In the spiritual world, Oshimiri was born when Eke, the divine feminine, died in an explosion that created the universe we know today. When her husband, Chuku, the divine masculine, lifted her body, which was now the universe, he wept and covered all of existence in tears. These these tears became Oshimiri, and from her presence, Eke was able to resurrect into Allah. So today, Allah, the Earth Mother, is covered in a vast and mysterious veil of salt water. And this water became a realm of its own, producing and sustaining its own life and offering its gifts and curses to the world above. In Igbo cosmology, an individual must cross two rivers before reincarnating. This journey is physically symbolized by the whiteness of a newborn baby in conjunction to the waters of the womb, as well as the whiteness of a dead body. While one is crossing, their spirit is taking form. And in this journey, you will come across millions of spirits that live within Oshimiri, who can take advantage of the situation and emerge into the earth through you. The most popular of these spirits is the Obanje, aquatic spirits that enter the world to enjoy the pleasures of the living without the hardships that many of us are accustomed to, often choosing to die or return to Oshimiri when the world they envisioned is not their reality. In your journey of return, some of Oshimiri's spirits may see you and fall in love with you, even beginning a relationship with you that ends abruptly with your birth. These are often known as Di and Winyamiri. These spiritual spouses maintain a presence in your life after you're born. Out of jealousy, they can ward off potential suitors or damage any relationship between you and another person that is not them. They may appear to you in dreams as fully fleshed out people that you've never met before on earth, and some have described sensations of intercourse while they are sleeping without another person being present, or the feeling of missing another person that they have never met. If an individual fights through the challenges of D and Wunyamiri and eventually marries or finds lasting love, the spirit can go further to prevent childbirth and marital success within a household. The succubus is also a product of the marine world and known in our part of the world as Mamiwata. This spirit is barren and longs for children, and therefore she targets women, often women she's jealous of. She attacks by seduction, often luring husbands and lovers away from their homes, and in more grim tellings, kidnapping children and eating them as well. She can also emerge to deceive men away from their path, and many will give stories of seeing these spirits rise from water and re-enter, or lying by the waterside with pythons around her to indicate her presence in a nearby water. Oshimiri is the queen of the world these spirits emerge from, and when they plague an individual, she's the one you seek for justice, for she has jurisdiction over them. Comparable example is a child that is pestering you. If you cannot appeal to the child to stop, then you go to their parents. In Igbo cosmology, the elements of the universe and the Arushi that represent them come with a balance of gifts and challenges, and all is sought and resolved by speaking directly to the source of the trouble, and making peace with the element in order to make peace with a part of your inner world. Those who strive to master the art of communication with Oshimiri, as well as drawing from her gifts, are known as Izengwanyi or Dibyamiri. And around these 
spiritual leader is often a following builds of individuals who gather to find healing and strength through the elements of water. Their names differ based on community, but one of the most famous is Oumi. To understand how water healers are selected, we must go back to the beginning of time. In the rebuilding days of the universe, Chuku asked all of the Arushi to recite the four market days in order. After the rest failed, it was only Agun who knew the proper sequence. So that Agun's wisdom can guide the rebuilding of the universe through the Arushi, Chuku commanded all of the Arushi to cut Agun into pieces and eat him entirely. And from that day, within every Arushi is an Agun. Ushimiri's Agun is known as Agun Miri. Like all other Agun, it is the part of her that is tied to destiny, healing, and universal wisdom. And therefore, Agun Miri can select individuals from the terrestrial world to become Izen Wai or Dibya Miri. Once selected, an individual begins to feel a powerful pull towards water. They may exhibit what looks like mental illness, but is actually the universal mind being unlocked in an untrained spirit. Once an individual accepts the calling to become a healer, the process of mastering that universal mind begins, and from there they make peace with Agun Miri. The gift they then receive come with healing, knowledge, and the ability to live in the spiritual and physical world at once. They are also gifted with prophetic vision, the skill of divination, and the ability to serve as an intermediary between the physical and spiritual. If an Aizen wine grows in her craft, she serves her community as an alchemist, a doctor, a teacher, and a judge in legal disputes. She grows in her ability to connect with the Agum of all things, and therefore understand the Chi of all things, unlocking their healing properties and beyond. An Ezenwai therefore becomes a healer once she finds peace with Agum Miri. The Ezenwai is the leader of a union of followers who dedicate their time to bringing forth the healing of Oshin Miri. This following includes apprenticeships for healers, teaching healers, and often a specialization in healthcare as it pertains to women. She is also an expert on the many spirits that emerge from Oshin Shimmeri, how to manage, summon, and repel them based on the type of healing she's asked to do. The is and why form a political union within the community and their followers are sure that they hold great influence and power. Among these followers are those they have healed, which I will cover how and what this implies shortly, as well as those who came to the Oshimiri Shrine to seek refuge. Historically, these were individuals seeking to escape or heal from traumatic life situations or seeking freedom from the constraints of a previous life. Oshimiri's sanctuaries were bastions of acceptance and renewal, as well as a protective union for those who sought protection. They formed a cove of renewal for individuals, man and woman, who sought a fresh start and provided home and family for those who do not fit societal norms. For example, there are accounts of women who are not interested in marriage joining to escape obligations, as well as accounts of individuals escaping abuse of homes who were among her following. These unions would meet seasonally to venerate and honor the waters of their community, most often in the form of song and dance. They also give her gifts, and whether at the shore of a stream or at a personal altar, Oshimiri is famous for her love of luxury, sweets, and objects that shine, and this constitutes most of what is given to her. She also enjoys acknowledgement and praise more than most Irishi, and is often seen or depicted holding a mirror admiring her own beauty. It is also important to note that Oshimiri is the source of music and dance, and members of her universe, such as the Obanje, excel in these fields when they are among us. It is also a common way to praise her, honor her, and bring her joy, no matter where an individual is at. One can also cast Unzu powder into the water, complementing each cast with an affirmation for personal success or thanks to Nemiri for bringing that to an individual. With this knowledge as a guide, an individual chooses how to venerate Oshimiri based on what feels best to them. Oshimiri brings life, renewal, beauty, and rebirth. She's also the source of great material success, and it is said that members of her following and water elements as a whole within a community excel in business and have a keen adaptability and magnetism necessary for these results. Those who have a passion for hard work are also gifted by her, as beauty and ancestral thoughts also includes a good work ethic. For this reason, many ceremonies surrounding marriage strive to display the work ethic of a woman as an asset of her physical beauty. It is important to note that venerating Oshime doesn't require an individual to join her following, and that her following serves as a school of understanding and connection for individuals that seek it. Almost all members of traditional communities honored the waters in one way or another without necessarily being is and why Dibya, a water element or a devotee. I was recently privileged to learn of a special type of veneration for Oshimiri, and this is healing through dance. If a Dibya determines that the challenges of your life come from water, the afflicted individual goes to a sanctuary for Oshimiri for healing. These spirits can be the causes of failure, confusion, and chaos in various aspects of life, as well as diseases such as smallpox. 
It is also noted that when one sees a marine spirit by the stream, such as the Mamiwata, it is advised they go to the sanctuary to release a potential hold. In the process of releasing the hold, an individual will stay in the sanctuary for multiple days, at times for an entire onwa or moon. And while in the sanctuary, an individual is healed through physical medicine, as well as ceremonies of ritual dance and rebirth. These ceremonies involve the cleansing of an individual's body and spirit through herbal baths, dancing, and singing. Each marine spirit that afflicts an individual has a dance, and this dance is how it moves through the physical and spiritual world. While in the sanctuary, an individual is taught the dance of the spirit that afflicts his or her life. The person is taught how the spirit greets individuals, what it likes and dislikes, and various facets of its personality and nature. At the end of the healing, an individual is again doused in water and emerges reborn. At this point, the individual is new and has made peace with the afflicting spirit. In a final ceremony, the individual does the spirit's dance in order for the spirit to possess them, because now it is only while doing the dance that the healed person can ever be possessed by that spirit again, or have that spirit enter its life. When you do the dance, the spirit enters, and when you stop the dance, it returns to the waters. And therefore, the individual is healed physically and at peace spiritually. The healed person can live their life unbothered, but as a part of the peace agreement with the spirit, must return to the sanctuary or return to the waters once a year to perform this dance. For Oshimiri's children are curious about our world, and often this curiosity afflicts our life negatively especially when they seek to enter the world through us. And therefore, making peace with them is allowing yourself to be a portal by which they enter our world, but regaining the lock and key for when they leave. And that's it. Again, this is Derek with The Medicine Shell. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, this topic was really interesting to me, especially when I got a chance to do some research on the uh, sanctuaries themselves. I think the uh, concept of inviting a spirit that you've been conflicted with uh, to possess you for a moment and then letting it go um, is really important and I think it can benefit a lot of modern healing today, uh, be it conventional or of a spiritual nature. Uh, let me know what you think. Go ahead and comment and don't forget to subscribe. Um, I got more videos coming. Thank you very much. Take care.